accepted. Arkan is the plural of Rukun. Standing is one of the Rukun. Standing is also one of the Rukun. Takbiratul Ihram, submission to Allah, surrender to Allah, is a Rukun. Reciting Surah Al Fatiha is the Rukun. Ruku, Akidah, all these are Rukun. Without all these Arkan, these pillars, your prayer will not be accepted. The obligation after the Rukun is important for everyone who wants to have a good connection with Allah to know what is the wajibat in our relationship with Allah. When you establish your Salah, what is Rukun and what is Wajib. You must have that knowledge. And after that, you should know about what is recommended when you perform your prayer, the Sunnah. You have the Rukun, you have the Wajib, you have the Sunnah. Without focusing on these three angles, then your prayer will not be accepted. They also must fulfill the requirement of kushu. You understand what is kushu? Kushu means, brother and sister, that your prayer must come from your heart, whatever you say to Allah. And you feel humble before Allah. That's why we say, Allahu Akbar. We start our prayer by saying, Allahu Akbar. Allah is the great. Nothing is greater than Him. We humble ourselves. And also we must raise up both of our hands to show that there's nothing that we hide. Everything is open. It's a person who surrender to their enemy or whoever win the battle, you must raise up your hand to show them that you don't hide anything. I surrender myself totally. And that's why I said, you humble yourself that you are worshipping Almighty Allah the greatest. Nothing is more important in your life than Allah. This is how you should focus. And you must attend the prayer in your heart and mind. Your heart must respond to what you recite in your prayer. When you say Allahu Akbar, do your heart feel that Allah is the greatest? Do our heart feel that Allah is most important in our life? This is something you got to ask yourself. Only those who are focused in their communication with Allah, those who have khushu, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised us they are the inheritance of paradise. Without Kusha, you may not even enter paradise. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do not want people to say something, but their heart means something else. Their mind king of something else. And we know Allah is all seeing and all knowing. He sees us and He knows what is in your heart. I may not know. No one knows your father, your wife, your husband may not know, but Allah knows what is in our heart. And He said, Alladina hum fi salatihim khashaun. Allah said, Those who are successful. And those who believe in Allah, قَدْ أَمْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Those who believe in Allah. After believing in Allah, they have a connection with Allah. They have a good line of communication with Allah. No interference, no disturbance. You see our handphone sometimes, even how they use the satellite. At a certain point, there's always some disturbance. You are cut off. While you're talking, hello, 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 oh, it's gone. With Allah, you cannot do that. 
When Allah says this, Allah is telling us, those who offer their prayer, we know the best way to connect ourselves with Allah is through dua. And the best dua is through prayer. The best dua is through our prayer. Allah said, those who offer their salat with all solemnity and full submission to Allah, that means with understanding, you know, with knowledge, you know the pillars, you know what is wajibah, the obligation, and you know what is the sunnah of the prayer. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, did say one day, 1400 years ago, Allah gave him this knowledge to know what is going to happen to all of us today. He said, Inna rajul la yang sarifu ma kutiba lahu illa usu salati wa tuzwa wa thumu wa sudus wa al-qumus wa al-ruh wa thulasa nisra. The Prophet said, one might finish the prayer, everyone is performing their prayer, but only has a ten. Only has a ten. On nine, eight, seven, six, fifth, fourth, third, or a half of it written for him. They pray, but what they gain from Allah is different. Different people have different Yes, stage. Those who are more push up, they have a better stage. But those who have only half of it, may Allah guide us. Omar radiallahu anhu said, while standing on the podium when he was giving his khutbah, he said, a man might have white hair in Islam. After some time, all our black hair is going to turn gray. Mine also is turning. The male also is turning. A lot of us is having grey hair now. Alhamdulillah. It's not a bad sign, it's a good sign. That means we are getting wiser. We are getting closer to Allah. Yet has not completed even one prayer for Allah. Omar said, they are Muslim from dark hair or black hair too, gray hair, but they don't even complete one prayer for Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He was asked, "Why is that?" He said, "He does not perfect the prayer that required khushu. That means you do not perform your prayer with your heart. You don't perform your prayer with the right knowledge. You don't understand what is the rukun." What is the wajibat? What is the sunnah? But you are performing your prayer. This statement of Omar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu in the beginning of Islam should be considered in our time. He said in the beginning of Islam. Are he talking about the people in his time? No. The people in the time of the Prophet Allahu Akbar see the blessing that Allah has given them the blessing the victory that Allah has given them in the Muslim a minority but Allah gave them victory upon victory Allah bless them with all the things that they need they don't run after the world they go after here after and the world is running towards them today we are different we run after the world, we live akhirah, and the world is leading us. But the companions, alhamdulillah, they don't run after the world. Yeah. He considered that this is going to happen in our time, since many Muslims are indulging in life's affair and pray with their body, but not with their heart and mind. Do we agree with this? We have been praying, asking, Oh Allah, forgive me. Are you sure that you ask Allah to forgive you? Do you really mean that? 
Oh Allah, give me guidance. Do you really ask Allah for guidance? Do you want to be guided? Oh Allah, clarify my heart. Are you serious with your prayer? Do you really mean what you say? Oh Allah, help to purify your heart. You Allah, forgive my sin. Are you serious with your prayer? You ask Allah to forgive your sin. What will be our answer, brother and sister? Are we serious? Don't. No answer yet. Inshallah, after this we are serious. And this is very important. Hassan ibn Ali said, Amir bin Abu Qais had some people saying that they find it difficult to concentrate while praying and be commanded. By Allah, it's better for me that sword a cutting my inside than I feel what you say you feel in the prayer. And he continued by saying, I have never stood up for prayer without imagining the Jahannam. Some of the Sahaba, when they establish their prayer, they always think of Jahannam. Because they do not want to go Jahannam. They fear Jahannam. They always ask Allah to save them from Jahannam. And this is the prayer that the Prophet commands us to recite every time before we give salam. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min azab al-jahannam wa min azab al-qabri wa min fitnat al-mahya wal-mamati wa min fitnat al-masih al-dajjal This is what we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Tell a brother, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the right understanding to our prayer And also remember People who are praying today are divided into five groups Now let us look into these five groups and see which group do we belong number one there are those who wrong themselves by falling into shortcoming in the prayer such as performing imperfect wudu praying late and disregarding perfection concerning the pillar and the requirement of the prayer those who perform the prayer from the beginning they do not perform the illusion perfectly. They don't care. How to perform your wudu perfectly? The best way to follow Prophet Muhammad. That's number one. But those may perform their wudu perfectly, follow the sunnah of the Prophet, how they clean themselves, how to take ablution. It's very important. Because ablution is the key of salah and salah is the key to paradise. When you fail in ablution, you fail in your salah. When you fail in your salah, you disqualify entering paradise. Maybe you perfect your wudu, but you like to delay your prayer without a reason. You just love to delay. You like to pray the whole near to Asa. You know why? So that you can combine the prayer. One wudu, two prayer. If you are a traveler, Alhamdulillah, you can make jama. But you are local. We hardly you know, join breakfast and lunch. Once a while, we have brunch. Normally, breakfast is breakfast, lunch is lunch. Tea is